I know you all know this scripture very well. Even the intercessors love to pray this verse. Uh, John 1 verse 5 says, The light shines through the darkness, and the darkness can never ext extinguish it, meaning that the, the darkness has to hide, and the darkness has to leave when the light steps in, because the light is far more stronger than the darkness. And this world outside is sitting in darkness, as I've just prayed this morning. They're waiting for just one drop of love. They're waiting for good news this morning. And they're waiting for good news. They're waiting, they're waiting to hear good news because all that you receive in this world is bad news and is negative news. John himself was not the light. He was only a witness to the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming to the world and so the carrier of the light came from heaven to earth. So John the Baptist was prophesying uh, and, and he was telling about this light that was coming. He was not the light, but the light of this world was coming. And so the carrier of the light came from heaven to earth to teach us the way. Yes, he came to teach us. He even came to teach us how to pray. The disciples once said, Master, just teach us how to pray. And yes, he was here as a teacher. And he came to heal the sick. He came to, to raise the dead. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He came to set the captives free. What an, an assignment to do on this earth. He came, he came as absolutely a servant. God said his unfailing love through Jesus in this dark and broken world, you know, I work daily and weekly with broken people. People who um, they are utterly dis at the, um, at the, uh, absolutely destroyed by, by, the, by this world, by abuse. You know what? Abuse is a very, very bad thing. Verbal abuse, you know, verbal abuse cause deep wounds into so inside this body, in the heart. You know, it's not... It's not a hurt that is on the outside that you can see or a wound, but it is a deep wound on the inside that cannot be healed easily. So I work with people who are broken, even at the conferences. I work with broken people. Father has called me to heal the broken hearted and set the captives free through deliverance. The Word of God says in John 1 verse 15, this is the one I was talking about. Someone is coming. Listen to this. This is beautiful. Someone is coming who is far greater than I am. And he was talking about Jesus. For he existed long before I did. And so God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus as a servant. And this week, on Thursday the 9th of May, we will be celebrating Ascension Day, which reminds us of, 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 of Jesus Christ, of, of, of how we left this earth to heaven again. This is this, this, meaning that the story of Jesus was not ended when he was risen from the tomb, when he suffered all the pain, when he suffered on the cross, when he died for us, yes, I mean, the people who crucified him, they thought that, yes, this is the end of this man now. They had no reason to hate him. They had no reason to destroy him or try to destroy him. But let me tell you, this was not the end. So his life story didn't end. The soldiers and those who crucified him, mean they, they were ready. They were ready to wipe him out from this earth. But that was not the end of Jesus' life story. And Ascension Day, the 40th day of, um, after his resurrection, he was ascended to heaven. And this is not even the end because he is the beginning and the end, meaning that it is an um, an uh, unending end. It will never end. It will never stop because He came to live and to die for us and to live forever and ever. It also means that the Holy Spirit, listen to this, it also means that the Holy Spirit was, was given to us 
in a measure, a full measure. Acts 1 verse 8 says, But when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power and will tell people about me everywhere. And that is what we're doing now. After Jesus was resurrected, after we gave our lives to Jesus, uh, our bridegroom, our King of kings and Lord of lords, after, after we received the Holy Spirit, we are here to, to tell the world about the good news of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we, will, we have received the power and tell people all around, all over the world about Jesus and his kingdom. In Luke 24 verse 46 says, Jesus said, it was written long ago that the Messiah must suffer and die and rise again from the dead on the third day. Can I read it again? Jesus said it. He said it. It was written long ago. It was written long ago by the prophets. It was written long ago that the Messiah must suffer and die and rise again from the dead on the third day. Verse 49 says, And now I will send the Holy Spirit, just as my Father promised, but stay, stay in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from above. You know, we are entering a very, very, very exciting season that it is now Ascension Day that is coming and then the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And I pray this morning that each and every one of us, each and every one will receive a fresh touch from the Holy Spirit this, this year. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come down like fire and like never before and touch each and every one of us this morning. Yes, touch us so that we can have fresh power, fresh anointing to, to preach the gospel and of Jesus Christ in this last few hours before the bridegroom is returning. We all need a fresh touch. We need all a fresh touch from the Holy Spirit. You know what? Jesus has ascended and now they wait for the promise. Listen, Jesus has ascended and now we are waiting for the promise for the bridegroom to come back to fetch his bride. And therefore we, our, our lamps must be filled with oil. Our lamps must be filled with oil so that we can be ready when the bridegroom comes. I always say you cannot borrow from my, you cannot borrow my oil. I can't give you some oil. I need my lamp to be filled with oil so I can't give it away and it's hard work you know to fill your lamp with oil it is very hard work it is pushing through it is pushing through it is stretching forward it is moving forward and not stop and not giving up so and that is when you receive that power that is when you receive the holy ghost anointing and i pray that he will come down like fire like tongues of fire upon you he came as a servant but after he was ascended to heaven he was and he is still seated at the right hand of the father as a ruler first he walked he came as a servant but today he is a ruler sitting at and positioned at the right hand of my father he is our advocate in heaven and he is the king of kings what an amazing life story of jesus a never-ending life story and today we are waiting for his return as a bride john baptist yes he said and i've read it to you someone is coming who is far greater than i am how amazing will it be that day when we will see our jesus Yes, he's far more greater than I am, and he existed long before I did. Yes, um, the people in, in those years were very fortunate to walk with him. The disciples were very fortunate to walk with him, to touch him, to listen to him. Yes, but 
We were not so fortunate, but we have the Holy Spirit as our teacher, as our advocate, as our helper, and we can't wait to see him one day face to face. And I believe it's very, very, very soon. And today we can say amen and amen to that. All of us, you know, Acts one eleven. why do you stand looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in just the same way as you have watched him go into the heaven. Yes, we are, we are looking into the sky, we are watching. But the word of God says, why are you looking into the sky? I believe it was said when, when Jesus left the earth and they, they looked up um, and tried to follow him, but he disappeared. And so the word of God says, and he will come on the same, in the same way. You know, he has been taken up, but he will return just the same way as we have watched him Go into the heaven. Yes, we are waiting for him. We are watching and we're stretching forward and we're keeping our, our ears open to listen the sound of the trumpet. We don't know the hour and the minute of his return, but let us be ready. Jesus said in Acts 1 verse 7, the Father sets those dates and they are not for us to know. Let us be ready. We don't know the date, we don't know the hour, but the Father sets those dates and they are not for us to know, unfortunately. <laughs> Our Lord Jesus, yeah, a certain songwriter wrote the following song, the lyrics of the song, and I must read it for you this morning, it is so beautiful. Once on a hillside, people were gathered. For Jesus had risen and soon would ascend. Then he blessed them. He rose to heaven and gave them his promise to come back again. We shall see Jesus just as they saw him. There is no greater promise than this. When he returns in power and glory, we shall see Jesus. We shall see Jesus just as he is. My friend, this morning, we still have time to make right with the Lord. My friend, this morning, we still have time to repent before it's too late. I can still remember many years ago, my husband preached a sermon and he gave an altar call and after that he gave another altar call and one man came to to the front and he repented and he gave his heart to Jesus and the next day he died of a heart attack so let's make right with Jesus while there is still time give your heart ready make your heart ready give your heart to Jesus while we have this morning, the moment to do it. And Father, we come to you now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We know this is a divine appointment with you this morning. I pray, Lord, that you touch each and every listener's heart this morning. I pray that you search our hearts, Lord. And if there's anything wrong, if there's anything or division between us and you, Lord, have mercy, O Lord. Wash us this morning once again in the precious, precious blood of my Lord Jesus Christ. It's not too late, Lord. We give our all to Jesus. We give our problems, our worries, our concerns this morning to you, Lord. You know everything. I pray that the anointing of Isaiah 10 verse 27 will break every yoke this morning every yoke of slavery, every yoke of the orphan spirit, every yoke of abandonment, every yoke of abuse, every yoke, Father God, of addiction, my God, have mercy upon 
your sons and your daughters. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Lord, the anointing destroys every yoke. Amen and amen. My friend, have a blessed day. And keep your ears open to listen for the sound of his voice and the sound of his trumpet. In Jesus' mighty name.